Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pinion. I'm bringing you today's word for September 13th, 2016. I've been teaching a series all year long entitled Refine Focus, where we've been learning how to recalibrate our focus with God, with his word, through his spirit this year, 2016, so that we can become the men and women God has called, destined, designed, and desires for us to be. I've been teaching the parable of the sower for months. I want to go back to that parable this morning with a message entitled, God's word is not the issue. If there's an issue, then it's really with you and not with the word of God. And we're going to see what I mean here in a minute. So let's go back to the parable. This is Mark chapter four, verses 13 through 20. Jesus talked about this parable where a sower went forth to sow. He sowed the same seed in four different types of soil, got four different types of results. His disciples asked him, well, Jesus, can you explain this thing to us? This is what Jesus said. The farmer is like someone who plants God's teaching down the side of people. Now, sometimes the teaching falls along the, the, the wayside. And these are like the people that receive the word of God. However, they don't understand it. So since their understanding is unfruitful, Satan comes immediately and snatches away the word that was sown in the hearts. Now, other people are like uh, the seed that's sown on rocky ground. Now, these are the people that receive the word of God, but they only have a thin layer of soil. So they have a surface level relationship with the father. So they receive the word of God with gladness. However, as soon as trouble comes or persecution comes because of the word, then these people, they're quick to give up. Now, other people are like seed that's sown on thorny ground. Now, these are the people that whose lives are just full of weeds. The Bible says that they receive the word of God. However, They've allowed their lives to become full of other things. The cares of this world, the love of money and everything else they want, those things become weeds that, that grow up and choke out the word and it doesn't produce a harvest in their lives. And then lastly, some people are good ground that actually receive the word of God and it produces a harvest, sometimes 30 times more, sometimes 60 times more, and even sometimes 100 times more. So what does this mean to you today? I have five things to share with you. Um, and I really believe, I, I'm asking you to open up your heart to receive what God is saying. I, I, I wanna share this the way that, the Lord gave it to me and please receive it in the spirit in which the I'm sharing it in which the Lord gave it to me. All right, here we go. Number one, the same sower provided the same seed to all four types of soil. That's clear. The only variable was the soil, the soil, right? So the seed produced based on the quality of the soil, not the quality of the sower or the seed. There was nothing wrong with the sower. There was certainly nothing wrong with the seed. But there was something wrong, however, in three out of the four types of soil. See, you and me, we are the soil in the parable. The issue is never with the seed. The issue is never with the Bible. The issue is never with the word of God. If there is ever an issue, then the issue is with you. The issue is with me. The issue is with us. Number two, God's word is incorruptible seed. First Peter 1 and 23 says it's an incorruptible seed whereby men are born again. So we're actually born again by the word of God. The word of God has the power to produce a life yielding and life changing harvest in, with, and through you. There's nothing wrong with the word, but if the word is not producing in your life, then there's something wrong with you. If there's ever an issue between you and God, then the issue is always with you. Until you accept this truth, until you take responsibility for the things that are keeping the word of God from working in your life, then the word is never going to produce to the level that it's supposed to produce. You can't blame God and you can't blame the word. If there's ever any blame, you have to take the blame yourself. You have to take responsibility when things are not working in your life. You see the word of God working in other people's lives and you're getting frustrated. But why is it not working? Don't blame God. Don't point the finger at God. Don't get upset with other people. Don't get jealous because God is blessing them and they're walking in the favor of God. Well, then they are working the word. You have to ask yourself, am I working the word? There's never an issue with the word. If there's ever an issue, it's always on, on us. Number three, Joshua and Caleb. I use them as an example. Joshua and Caleb received the same gospel. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter four that the gospel was preached unto us as well as unto them, but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And the writer of Hebrews was talking about Numbers 13 and he's talking about Joshua and Caleb. He says, listen, uh, there were 12 spies that went out into the land and Moses preached the gospel unto them. What was the gospel? The good news was, hey, God has given us this land. This was land that was promised to our forefathers to give us some 400 years ago. This is our land. This is our time. This is our season. So Moses preached the gospel to these, to the nation and also to these 12 spies. 
But as they went out, the 12 spies, watch this, only two out of the 12 spies believed the word. Only two out of the 12 spies mixed faith with what they heard. The 10 out of the 12 spies were unbelievers. They, um, they did not believe God. They put a no where God had put a yes. And because of it, 10 out of the 12 spies and all the millions of people that actually believed the 10 instead of the two died in the wilderness. And that was not the will of God. They died in the wilderness. They missed out on God's best. They did not go into Canaan. Why, even though God was saying, this is yours, I'm giving it to you. I want to bless you. It's already done. You just have to receive it. And they failed to receive it. The issue was not with God. The issue was not with the message. The issue was with the people that failed to receive what God was saying. My question for you this morning is, are you like Joshua and Caleb who received the promise, who did go into Canaan? Or are you like the other 10 spies who failed to believe? If there's an issue, the issue is not with the gospel. The issue is not with the message. The issue is always with us. Number four. If you fail to rid your life of every blessing blocker, and we've talked about the blessing blockers and how they hinder the blessing from flowing in our lives. If you fail to rid your life of all the blessing blockers and receive the word in faith, then the word of God is going to fail to produce a harvest in your life. But it won't be because there was something wrong with the word. It will be because there was something wrong with you. Number five. And finally, I run into people all the time who say, listen, Rick, I tried the Bible and the Bible didn't work. To which I reply, no, let me tell you something. The Bible tried you and you didn't work. There's never anything wrong with the Bible. You, people say, oh, there's all these contradictions. Show me. Show me a contradiction in the Bible. Show me an issue with the Bible. The issue, there's never any issue with the Bible. There's never any issue with God. There's always an issue with us. So it's not that you tried the Bible and the Bible didn't work. No, the Bible tried you and you didn't work. Oh, I tried faith. Faith didn't work. No, faith tried you and you didn't work. There's nothing wrong with the Bible. There's nothing wrong with faith. If there's ever an issue, the issue is always on us. So you have to take responsibility, accountability. You have to get to the point where you're saying, you know what? I, the word of God is going to work in my life because I am going to work the word. I'm going to mix with faith everything that I hear. I'm going to believe and receive and apply and pray over. I will become the man, the woman God called me to be. Until you get to that point, you're not going to walk in the fullness of the life that Christ Jesus sent you into this world to walk in. So let's close this out with a declaration of faith. I want you to open up your mouth and declare this over your life. You ready? Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of refined focus for me. I bring my life into focus in 2016. There was a time in my life when I was not good ground, but those days are over. I read my life of every blessing blocker. I open my heart to receive your word. I mix with faith what I hear. I believe I receive what I read, pray, hear, and am taught. I meditate and I medicate on your word day and night. I pray over what you say. I apply it to my life every day. I don't live by bread only. I live by every word. You speak to me, Father. I am good ground and your word is working in me and for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Look on the right hand side of the website and sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. As you head into this day, just know that there is never an issue with the word of God. There's nothing wrong with God. There's nothing wrong with the word. Take accountability. Take responsibility. Make some changes. Work the word and the word will work for you. God bless you.